Hey guys, look, most of you've never heard of Pittsburgh, North Carolina. <laughs> it's just below Chapel Hill, but other than that, it's not close to nothing. Except for the soda shop next door, there's a bank across the street, but there is a woodworking gym <laughs> hidden in Pittsburgh, North Carolina. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this is one of woodworking. Legendary. <laughs> hey. well, Good to see you. Yeah, a lot of woodworking schools in the country, but this is the only one that backs directly up into a bar. So we're all set. We got alcohol powered woodworking covered. There we go. You. There so, we go. We're good. Yeah. Now, Roy let us come interviewing. For you who don't know it, Roy has a school here. Mm -hmm. But right now, we're upstairs. <laughs> you got enough tools here. I was checking my wallet and Roy says, not to worry, the guy takes credit cards. And most of y'all have met Carl Letts. He's hidden back here and Carl's like, oh my. It's not hidden. That's a very fine saw. That's a dovetail saw. Ed here who runs the tool store has uh, re uh, put a new plate in it and re-toothed up here and uh, all just restored usable tools, just great. So give it out of whack, man, it's great. <laughs> Listen to that. <laughs> and this is the one you like, here. Well, now you've tried this it, one. <laughs> they're I all like great. them both. Yeah, they, well, both. there you go. Well, you got, that's why you have two pockets there. <laughs> there you go, I mean, so, what can I say? I mean, yeah, really nice dovetail uh, saws. Um, he's restored and that's got going nice in. That's a nice little saw. So this has been a, a great asset. Should we walk around? You want to see yeah, some of this stuff? Yeah, see what you got. It's been a great I, asset. If you like hand tools, this is just. Right. This is Ed Lebetkin runs the place here. And uh, you can see just every, every kind of tool you can imagine uh, from, the vintage, from the hand tool era. Uh, if we need anything uh, for the classes, you can just come up and uh, borrow them and work with them uh, during the class. Uh, every kind of router and hand plane from the uh, just the common to the exotic. Uh, Charles, he's got more routers than you do. Oh my golly! That, well, I guess we do. Is the uh, but they're missing cords. Round that. Yeah, this is all like I say, all alcohol powered. We're okay. all we're, we're all set. Okay. As well, you know, I don't apologize. I I come off and forgot it. I got a nice old antique draw knife. Oh. And I was going to drill it and put a. Uh, cord in it, just yeah. a joke. Ah, but it's a nice one. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I couldn't bring myself. No, to well, you don't to mess it up. the handle. No, that would be for so a I'll day. send it to you. I come around. Yeah, to right. delay. Well, let's look. Well, come on around this. You walk around that way. I walk around this way. I'll show you. Meet you down here at the draw knives. Come on down. I uh, like this. Here's uh, old um, Buck Rogers vintage tools. These were from uh, the 1950s. Uh, uh, the wonderful design uh, bureau, uh, Huxtable design these from Miller's Falls. I've got some downstairs. Uh, the, here you go. Here are the draw knives. Oh, so yeah. some of them are big enough uh, for uh, <laughs> uh, the mast shaves. So some of these big ones, and then down to the uh, little ones. It's just just great. It's it's wonderful, like a museum here, if, oh, if nothing good. else. Yeah. Yeah, really nice. Oh, yeah, that, that one's really neat. I mean, I mean, what I like is when you can look in here and you can still see the hand forge marks. Mm-hmm. You know where it was hammered. Yeah, it's ev everything from the hand forged ones to uh, these kind of patent ones with the uh, adjustable angle on the handles uh -huh. and stuff like that. Every kind of thing, and it's just just the draw knives. He's just been uh, really so what great for he us. Was telling me. Mm-hmm. The Woodwright shop. Yes. 35 years. Yep, back to the days of silent television. And still going. That's right. Hey, I was a kid back then. It was, you know, still going. Still going. Uh, absolutely. Uh, well, let's see. Well, 36 years ago, I guess it was 19, uh, was it be 19? 1980. Yeah, yeah, 79, 80, uh huh. Yep. 
29 years old uh, when we began and uh, started the, but when I was a kid, I taught an imaginary, uh, a pretend woodworking TV show in my basement when I was 12 growing up. So, and it wasn't any such thing, but I would turn to the camera and say, you, no. Were well, you yeah. the first? No, uh, there were some others. Uh, there was uh, Homer Formby right. had a how-to show, uh, uh, very similar. Uh, there was Wally's Workshop, and just oddly, I knew uh, the kid, the family of uh, Wally Bruner. So this is kind of a lost in the archives of early television, but there was uh, Wally Bruner. But even back, uh, I picked this up from my course from my great uncle, who was back in the 1930s, a radio woodworker. And that was, because you know, I teach dovetailing on television, how to do all this stuff. Doing it on the radio was, that was tough. But, but until they figured out they didn't ever have to make anything, they just did the sound effects. And so this is all the story. <laughs> this is all my story. Well, let me tell you, well, okay, because okay, I'm just, the night. Yeah, no, they did uh, sound effects in the 30s. They'd say, all right, well, let's get back to work on this Chippendale High Boy we started last week. You know, it's 1935. People tune in and say, oh, yeah, here it is. Well, <laughs> boy, that cub tail cut just perfect there, Grandpa Sam. Yeah. And so people would tune in. They'd love to hear this radio woodworking program and see what Grandpa Sam had built every week. Uh, now, that's not true, but I've told the story so many times that I think it is. So what can you do? I don't know. It might as well. I think it's better than. <laughs> hey, hey. Every good lie just needs a little time. To That's it. It might as well. But I think the world would be a better place if it were true. So I'd say I'm going to stick there with it. Go. There Let's see go. what we got right here. We've got uh, Ed's got corner chisels. So if you're into timber framing, uh, heavy, heavy timber carpentry. Got more corner. Boy, I remember just looking and looking, trying to find one of these when I was starting out. And you know, now I'm looking at a dozen of them. Oh yeah, I mean that's one of the things, I mean I'm looking in here thinking to myself the number of yard sales, garage sales, <laughs> pull over on the side of the road because you see something. Yeah. This guy's gone through to a mass of yeah. many pieces. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, look at the, now we should look at the, the plow planes he's got. They're just, these would be the centerpiece of anybody's, any joiner uh, cabinet makers. Uh, tool chest. And let me tell you something, guys. Plans. You ain't even got to know how to use them. If you put them <laughs> in your shop, it makes you look good. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, carry this with you to the bar. <laughs> it's a great way to meet people. Uh, who's that now? Is he married? Ed? Ed? Ed is indeed, yes. Okay, that's why he has a shop, because his wife said it is time for some of that. Time. I want all this stuff out of here. Exactly. This is it. So make Ed's wife happy. And yeah, but what's, the, this stuff yeah, but what's out. the old cliche is I hope she don't sell them for what I told her I paid for. Ah, that's right. Well, it's been great. Uh, the, uh, this has just been a real... Uh, yeah, I tell you, you think, just like you with your uh, program, uh, the uh, when something grows bigger than you yourself, you know what you had intended. Uh, it takes up a life of its own, and that's what, that's when you know you've hit something right. So, well, you definitely hit it right. I mean, well, it's, you're an icon. Not only, I, I mean, just in the woodwork. No, see, on TV, I'm only this tall, though, so that really I was feeling. Anyway, uh, it's 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 difficult to deal. With. Well, let me tell you what. <laughs> yeah. One of the biggest honors I got was Poplar Woodworking did a spoof. And I think it was Megan Fitzgerald mm -hmm. was you. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, I don't know who the blonde hair guy was, the ponytail. <laughs> uh, anyway, he was me. He, he wasn't near as good looking though. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I gotta tell you, Megan on the other hand, yeah, oh, she can do it. She, she's got that whole thing happening there. I learned a lot from her, so I, c I can do Megan next. Well, no, but maybe I better not. Uh, should we go on downstairs? You want yeah. to while we're still ahead of things here? Yeah. Yeah, we'll what? move our way around the mallets and sharpening stuff. So again, this is uh, Ed Lebetkin's tool shop just over the school and uh, been a great asset to us. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, All right. We're, we're going to go downstairs. I'll be right back. He's going to get something, I know. I bet it's going to be a, yeah, he's getting some dovetail saws. <laughs> All right. 
Good choice. Shopping trip. <laughs> oh man. All right, that's okay. We just put it on your account. Uh, he'll work. He'll work it out. We'll take care of it. He'll work it out. He should be in any minute. And we'll see. Oh, axes. It's great. You this is something. Been here for very long. Every kid, that's what I want, every kid, till every kid in America has a good axe to take with them to school to learn something useful for a change. That's when I'll know our work is done. Getting ready to hop on that school bus with their axe in hand. Well, come on, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Hold on. Oh, what'd you find something? I thought maybe, maybe there was ads over here. Uh, there's, uh, there, I think we're, we're, are we in the ads department? We are. Here's some hand ads. Hey, he's got some real nice miter saws here, too. Oh, dear. Well, this one would take your foot clean off there. Yeah, very nice timber saws. That's the one. one of the, uh, the, the movie now, The Revenant, that's out. Do you know that one? The yeah. very scary movie with the bear attack, and it eats up Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio and stuff like that. All those tools that are used in the movie came from here. Oh, really? So yeah, they they put together a big package for them, and it all uh, went out there. So we'll see. But there's saws and tools that uh, and hatchets. I think I don't think the I hatchets are used for woodworking. Boy, this is the the land. This is where <laughs> this is where hand planes go to be reborn. I wanted to see like the elephant graveyard, but if you need a flex bottom plane, there you go. Actually, I have one. There, yeah, Stanley 113. I think it is. Excellent. So and we're getting ready to do a Bombay class, and they're going to use oh, cool. how to use one of them. All right. Well, it's about time. <laughs> well, yeah, we said we're going to go downstairs. Okay. Come on now. Here we go. That's a treadle sewing machine. Not, I mean, so, uh, sawing. A, a sawing a, machine. A, a treadle um, <laughs> jigsaw. <laughs> It's a jigsaw and lathe. It, that ain't a a it ain't a jigsaw either, Roy. It not a. Uh, we're both having senior moments. I'm sorry. <laughs> how, how is that not a jigsaw? It's a scroll saw. Scroll saw. Is that a scroll saw? Jigsaw is something different? Because of the arms out there? Yeah, it's got electric on it. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, well, who, who knew? <laughs> I've heard of that electric thing. I don't know if it has much potential. No, it, it, that's the wine shop. You don't need to go in there. Don't go. I in, swear that's, I need to go. No, no, no. no da, da, down this way. So how many classes do you do here? Uh, they're usually every weekend. There's something going on. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, we have. Uh, you know, the weekends are always busy, and then the. Uh, uh, Saturday classes uh, uh, in the main, but then uh, five-day classes. We just finished uh, the, well, here, here they are, Bubo book stands. And I have been teaching these for so long that I never get tired of these darn things because they, they just have uh, such a nice combination of uh, you know, attention to layout, careful cutting, and I get folks get to do carving, uh, even if they're not good at doing figure carving. Mm -hmm. You know, Mary Mary, right. we know right. she can carve any kind of organic uh, shape and form. I can carve a circle, <laughs> so, and uh, all my students can too. So this is kind of neat. They do the one piece uh, book stand there that works real well. So that was, uh, I guess, this weekend, and then uh, plenty more here. I'm setting up to do uh, uh, a pro. Now is the time when we dance. There we go. There we go. And then the cell phone won't stop ringing. We can't dance. You don't have on steel toed shoes. Nah. <laughs> uh, so let's see. I, uh, be setting up for a program. Uh, coming up, making boxes here. Uh, I'll show you the. Uh, I've got a program we'll be doing. Oh, I guess all the plow planes are out already. But. It's your turn to ring. Don't you just. 
I okay. guess I okay. should think I should turn mine off too. <laughs> but I'm thinking about it. Here, I'm going to turn mine the heck off. Norm calling all the time, you know, drinking and dialing. What can you do? I don't know. Did I say that out loud? I you don't think I. I don't think I did. No, I didn't mean that. No, right, we're, now we're back on. <laughs> this is one of the uh, things we do in making the little boxes. Uh, just a real simple thing, but you require so much control of the plow plane uh, to get the grooves and splines and so forth just right. Uh, so I'll be setting up for that, trying to find something that. Uh, uh, is different enough, but people can still, you know, connect with and oh, like this here. People have been dying for these, and so we really worked on the proper technique here, because uh, otherwise you could make a grave mistake. <laughs> uh, it's no simple undertaking to knock one of these out, but I dug up some old plans. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, so something. Simple. Okay. Okay. Wait a minute. How long did it take you to get that steel down? <laughs> oh, not long. That comes with. It's pretty low end uh, part of the business. But you know what a great uh, thing. You know, even this. If it, I think the thing is to find the real uh, root lessons in very simple things. So this okay, is just a six board box. Qu my first question was going to be, okay, wait a minute, Roy, how'd you bend them side? Well, you see the curfing right yeah, there. Yeah, that's what I saw. You curved it. Yeah, so you curve it and then pour boiling water on the mm -hmm. side. So a very simple pine box, uh, boiling water, uh, just for, you know, get a half a tea kettle of boiling water, and it bends just fine uh, down. The whole trick with it, though, is the way the grain runs in this. Uh, so we get the long grain going this way, and then on the end, gra <laughs> end grain, uh, it goes the other direction there. Uh, is that Norm again? Yeah. Oh, poor guy. Yeah. He's got to get his, you know, feeling from his feeling of approval from inside. Not from external, not from outside. You know what I mean. Yeah, you know, you got to. It's got to really come from yourself, not from others. I understand. I understand. That's it. That's a, that's a yep. interesting piece. Well, in that, it, interesting in the simplicity of it. You see how the grain turns, so you have the grain going this way, and then it's at right angles. You never do that, of course, not in dovetailing, not in decent cabinet but making. But you nailed it. Exactly. And that, that was the lesson of this one, was that uh, the grain has to be this way in order for the nails to grip. They won't grip and end grain. I get students and you tell them, and says, you know, we're going to, you know, we're running this molding across, mm -hmm. you know, opposing the grain. We're going to nail it. All right. And you get an email and say, oh, I ain't using no nails yeah. in my furniture. And you're like, wow, they've only been around for, you know, <laughs> since the beginning. <laughs> and they're not broke. Good for you. Yeah. yeah. Wood expands the you know, it's like a square peg in a round hole. All right. Yeah. You ever seen you ever seen a crack around it? Uh have I? I actually have. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. A square peg in a round hole. I'm <laughs> But uh, that's just because I've done enough to crack a bunch. Yeah, <laughs> the odds are going to catch up with me. But I do, I do know what you mean. It, you know, it works. Yeah, but you probably it works. Got, it well, grips. Yeah, but I mean, the thing of it is, is that the cool thing about if you got it size right is that peg, the pressure is on the corners. Mm -hmm. And it allows a little movement in mm -hmm. within the wood. It'll compress the wood. Nails, Same. Yeah. nails hold. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Let me uh, go get the brushes on this thing. I'm going to bring them back. Uh, um, and, and this is a uh, program we did, so it's, it's probably old business, but I thought this was, this is the kind of thing I'm always looking for. If you teach, you know, you teach, you're showing folks, you need something that'll show. This is oriented the way the grain work is going here. And so putting the nail in distorts the grain downward so that it's gonna grab. If we went straight into the grain, it'd just pull right out, but going sideways distorts the fibers downwards, and nails check in, but they don't check out. There exactly. you go. And, <laughs> so then, and then, you're then you put it underground. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
yeah, that's the other thing. I try and get folks to know that they can't, uh, they don't have to, and in fact, shouldn't drill a hole for these. Let the nail punch through mm -hmm. when you use a cut nail and use a proper cut nail. I have to get old ones. Uh, uh, but boy, you know, if you want to generate uh, mail and people writing, you're talking about people getting after you about uh, using nails, just say pre-drill these holes and see how much mail you generate. You say, Mr. Underhill, I have written to you and Mr. Abrams time and time again. You cannot pre-drill a hole. How can you pre-drill? You can only drill a hole. And I said, you're right, you're right. I'm sorry, I don't say that. You don't say, you, want me, you don't, want, don't mess up. They don't miss nothing. No, well, that's right. You can't pre-drill a hole. Everybody's right. And I just, just, you know, exactly. You're right. Uh, so anyway, there you go. Nice stuff. Let's see what else is here. We've got... Um, well, tell us, tell us what classes you have upcoming. Well, uh, one and of the things... Can them online? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, a lot of them have, have uh, filled for the year, but one of the big ones is going to be doing uh, window work and sash work. Here we go. This is, uh, you know, uh, challenging because I have to have... The tools for doing window sash work have to be very finely tuned. Mm -hmm. And uh, getting these old hand tools, the stick and rabbit planes. In fact, let me go get one. Well, there's a bunch of you them can down. Draw peg? Yes, we're going to uh, uh, draw peg these things. So we'll put uh, draw boring in them. Here's one of the uh, stick and rabbit. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, this is not stick and rabbit, but a uh, sash fillet mm -hmm. strip plane just to do the back side. So this is in the English style of uh, sash joint. So I've got to tune up for, you know, eight students. Got to tune up and have eight of these working perfectly. I understand. Eight different sets. And so that's the big challenge. But this is coming up, doing uh, window sash work, uh, scribed joints. I will do the, uh, uh, so everybody's going to make, make a window and uh, a lot of this business, the five-day class, uh, here we go. So, making so the, the tool chest. Oh, it's uh, woodwrightschool.com. The woodwrightschool.com. Mm -hmm. Woodwrightschool.com. And <laughs> no, actually, yeah, W-O-O-D-W-R-I-G-H-T-S-C-H-O-O-L. D O T C O M. Yeah, yeah there you go. All right, I got. It. I'll figure it out. Uh, you take that stuff for granted, but it's it's tough fun. But anyway, just panel stuff like this. We do a five day class making the tool chests and, and knocking those out. Uh, so got here's it. the initial frame. Got a nice little Hans tenon. Yeah, and then uh, blue tenon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, they use the panel raising plane to do uh, this part here and learn different techniques. So, yeah, think about it, these, these are uh, kind of sophisticated tools that uh, each joiner had and tuned yeah. up on their own. Well, we've got to tune up 10 sets for all the students. And I'm always telling the guys, yeah. I said, you know, you know, you got routers, and if you go upstairs and you're looking at all of those planes, you start, and everything, you start recognizing the profiles mm -hmm. that, yeah, the classic, the came from. classic profiles that teach yeah. the, and, uh, OG and uh, uh, but no matter overload. what, no matter what, when you can take something, whether it be something like a door, a window, or whatever, and you can look at this and say, "I made it," and you made it by hand, it's just something. <laughs> you know, I tell that. Yeah, it's time. nice. It's I, 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 I tell that all the time. I said, "You know, it's not. There's nothing wrong with using a dovetail jig to cut a dovetail." But do yourself a favor. Yeah. Learn how to do it with a hand saw. Yeah. Uh, it's it's funny though because I yeah, it's fine. I let me show you. Come on over here. I'll show you. I find creeping uh, uh, machine tools. Walk this way, please. I'll show you. This is so we say we're doing this stuff by hand. But very often I get out the uh, Barnes machines like this one. Uh, the, well, here, we can just leave it where it is. See, I've got all of Mary May's carving here. Okay. Beautiful. Uh, she was here teaching the cookie molds, and um, this is just a plain cookie here. 
uh, and then the windmill cookies and so forth. So we do that around Christmas time. But nevertheless, here's that uh, the mortising machine. Is a barn. So now, when you do this, you got to make sure you have on your safety gargoyles, Charles. Yeah, I got make, you. yeah there you go. So, I got you. <laughs> uh, now, Roy, wait a minute. Whoa, back up. Whoa. Oh. Oh. Thirty some years of watching you, mm -hmm. and you have to have on your safety gargoyles. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because I've never seen you draw blood. Oh, no, 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 no. So, uh, we were very careful. <laughs> well, the problem there was the director kept yelling, cut, cut, and I didn't know what he meant, and uh, so I just kept cutting. I thought he meant for entertainment purposes. Uh, <laughs> this has, uh, these are great yeah. here. The uh, problem is, you know, you work with a student getting skill with using a, a foot-operated mortising machine doesn't, uh, uh, transfer unless you've got one of these but boy you know mortising is a pretty uh, <laughs> intense bit now, of business. Now do a spring hole lathe class? Yeah we do that. I don't have one he uh, here today but that's coming up. We have the uh, foot operated lathe though, over here. Uh, the treadle lathes. Again it's tough to do turning. I need 10, 18, <laughs> 80s. Here give this one a try though. This we do have. Absolutely. Well, there you go. <laughs> I like that plan. So just advance a, a sixteenth of an inch each time. There you go. All right, I'll be back in about half an hour. All right? Okay. <laughs> That's sweet. It is a very nice machine. And, uh, uh, w you know, when we get down uh, to the wire, I'll use that. So you talk about, you say, oh, it's cheating and using the, well, this is a foot power mortiser. And, but it's great. I, I must say, I like this. Uh, people talk about hand tool work is quiet. You have 10 people with mallets and chisels, not quiet. This Can is. Can I just see you have a veneer saw? Uh, oh, let's look at that. That one's made by one of the fellows. Uh, Will Meyer teaches the uh, Moravian workbench building class. Mm -hmm. He made this saw, not a uh, veneer saw, but uh, a resaw. I think if we were doing veneer, it'd have a bigger web, you know, you'd yeah. want. Uh, broad, broader piece, right. right. This one is for, uh, well, should we try it? One of these guys have never ever seen a veneer saw. Ah, well, not quite for veneer, but we use this for whipping the uh, uh, anything. This is just a brilliant saw, and again, uh, it's a replica of one I have here, made by, by Will Meyer. And it works like this. So I uh, work on the, there we go. It's a very light touch. There we go. No downward pressure at all. Lift up on it, lift up, lift up, keep lifting, keep lifting, up higher. Lift up, there we go. That's it. <laughs> It's going right along there. And we're about there. We're going to stop. So uh, I tell you, when you're making these book stands, mm -hmm. uh, we saw down the one piece of wood, uh, the sawing is not nearly as important as is the stopping sawing when you get to right there. So we got to stop before we cut through the uh, hinge joint. You know, as a young, as a young man, uh, I grew up on a farm, and uh, we cooked and we heated with wood. And so something like this, where you've got the old cross cut. You use the cross cut to cut yeah. wood? Oh my God. And uh, I, fi I remember I finally got, I had a five foot one. I was a kid. And I finally got to the point I could get that thing swinging. Yeah. And I could do it by myself. I didn't have to go get my brother. <laughs> was he was on me anyway. I was just happy to cut it myself. Oh, yeah, well, good for you. All yeah. right. Yep. Well, not many people can, can still say they, you know, cut wood with the cross-cut no saws cross and misery, and misery it, whip. And, you know, you had to know how to sharpen it. Absolutely. That's a big part of it here, again, if people are not, uh, if they're not versed in how the tools work and, that, and the mysteries of the cutting edge. You got it. Yeah, it's, it's, that's got something it. they've got to go after. You got it. You got it. Let's see what else we've got here. I just, all, all kind of... Uh, 
Uh, I, want is hidden away. I, I want to make sure they've got this. They can go online. Mm -hmm. Woodwright Shop. Well, actually, Woodwright School here. Woodwright School. Woodwright Shop is the television. Tele you can just Google Roy Underhill, and you're going to find Google this guy everywhere. You bet. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. Everywhere. Let's tell us what thank you. Are you uh, you're gonna you're gonna check out the uh, wine store and the bar and the uh, soda shop now, or you gotta see the rest of the town. <laughs> We've got there's the bar <laughs> right out the back door. Right through that back door. We have to keep it closed while all the sharp edges are out, though. Uh, but we've, we've done right well with it. I understand. Yeah? I do understand. Oh, let's see. Um, Guys, I can only tell you this. Schedule yourself a play. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to thank Roy. Oh, my pleasure. For being generous enough to give me some of his time and let me... <laughs> Be careful that Paul, you don't want to have to join in. No, 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 I don't want to. No, I do have right. a question. Yes, sir. You nailed the sides. But you, oh, Why I, did you screw the top? Was you plan on him getting out? No, no. Uh, in fact, there is. Um, I don't have it here, but there's, you know how the drivers uh, go down the spiral drivers? Uh, will reverse and go backwards. Uh, the company Coffin, in truth, made screwdrivers, that, but they only went forward. They did not reverse uh, the spiral well, screwdrivers. There's a story about some kind of potion they had down in Louisiana that they gave it to the people, and it would put them so out, oh. they thought they were dead. Oh. So they would drill a hole put a rope down in it, hang it on a post on top of the grave for the ball. Oh, okay. And if the person came to, you jerk the string, thus the term saved by the bell. Saved by the bell. Well, I like it. Well, I hear the bell about now. And that, that's, that's very good. You'd be a uh, zombie or a vampire, that uh, there you go. coffin screwdriver you're talking about. That's how uh, Mrs. Dracula was able to screw Mr. Dracula in his coffin. Works for me. Yeah. All right. You know, you got to, you know, you, it's all in the details. You got to think about them things. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks for coming to Man, visit. That's great. You. All right. Good. Let's go check out the bar. I'm with you. Later. <laughs>